Here we are the next morning. Got nice sunshine. October 1st. I think Dawson's back here painting. He's got the tiger out here in the woods. How's it going? Good. He's getting the rest of the blue on here before he starts his white trim. And it's covering pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah. I think that prime coat helped getting something to attach it to. And uh, I'm going to let him at it. I'm doing some other projects. We got the tiger down here hunting. What's he looking at? Chipmunk that ran up the tree. Oh, you're not going to climb the tree? They like to watch. So then he's going to start on his trim. I'm concerned time wise to probably get over on the eave side because this is where the water is going to attack first do every morning so if we can get the fascia done and these corner boards done first would be nice before doing the gable ends all right i'm painting the fascia right now the face it's kind of hard to do under here and then i'm going with the brush i'm trying to get up as tight as i can it looks pretty deep. good and then show us that roller that's kind of a and that gives you a nice crisp edge, don't it? Okay. Won't take him too long to get the trim. There's not a lot on here. I can go only, only go up so high. But I'll get the rest with a brush. Gives you on a nice, the corner trim, it's nice. Nice straight edge. Look on the, look on the 45 here. That's yeah. pretty good. Good idea. All right, I got the trim done. Now I'm going to do the other side. And then I threw a coat of blue in the center center uh, of these doors. It's going to need two coats, but I think that's going to look good when he goes and uh, puts his uh, white on the trim. I think that's going to look kind of sharp. I think if the door stayed white, it'd be a little much white on the front of this. So he's going to get this fascia done over here. And that's the concern because we get dew now every day. And then he's going to, you know, keep the sides waterproof for now. And then later in the week here, we got some nice weather. He's going to finish up the front of this and the back. After school on another day here, Dawson's starting his trim again, right? Yeah. And... It should just about finish up. It'll finish this side tonight anyway, right? And then he's got a new lock that we're going to work on. It's an Amazon Basic deadbolt. So it comes with a handle. So it's an entry set and then a deadbolt electronic set that we're going to install. So I brought out the work table here. We'll familiarize ourselves with this lock. He's got to get that painted. And you see where the sun is, you're not going to have a whole lot of daylight there. So, I'm going to get started on this thing. Right now he's putting a board across the door to do it shut at night. That's not too safe keeping his tools in there. So, let's see what we got. They want you to use an alkaline battery. We'll have to see what they are. Double A, triple A. It's got a nice handle set. You gonna take a break and help me? You gonna get this on? This is uh, the outside keypad. It's kind of nice. This is gonna be mounted up. And then, do you know what size batteries this takes? Have you read it yet? It double. is, yeah, it's four double A's. We'll leave that off for now. So what we have to do, the thing that I was really going to help him with is to get the door drilled right, you know. So we got a, uh, a passage, I should say an entry. Um... We got a oops, striker. We got a collar. 
think we'll put our parts in the parts box so we don't lose anything here. Dump them out. He's got to paint this trim to get the eave side done. And you don't have a lot of time after school to paint. It gets cold quickly now. It's October. And I'm worried about him storing things in here unlocked. Get the stuff that's going to blow away in the next five minutes. And this is what I need, the template. Normally when you do a uh, dead bowl and it's not drilled out, why don't you go ahead and measure six inches up over here, Dawson. You got paint on your fingers. I didn't find a pencil, so just use a, a drill bit or something. And this was what, two and, was it two and three eighths? Yeah, two and three eighths. And I think this one can be one or the other also. Measure six inches from the center of that hole up. And we take a little mark. Here we got the tiger. Say hi. Hello. Say something. <laughs> no, he's no, you don't want to say nothing, but you go out in the woods and you start yelling. And mark six inches up and then he can take a square and bring that on around. And we'll get a small drill bit set in the drill. And that'll do his centering. I got everything out here. What do you need? The, um, you want to fold it on your line there. There's a square. Oh, the square. You don't really need it. You fold it straight. And then this is a... Uh, where's our striker? See, a lot of these will say two and three eighths or two and three quarters. And as long as this one is two and three eighths, and that's a back set from the edge of the door to the center, he's going to do this one at two and three eighths. So which hole is a two and three eighths? And we'll do a pilot on them. It'll be up on your center mark. And then which one is two and three eighths? The first circle, right? And then this mark center. So you want to bring that. Bring your paper over right straight now. Bring it to you. Straight over. Keep going. Keep going. And that's your six inch up and then hold that and then drill you can tape these or what you drill that center little hole keep it really straight and square good enough and then come around and do this one little one the two and three eighths hole bring your drill up get it straight that's good now they've got this so you can reverse it so drill a hole through that paper in the center light then we take this one and mount it here Set your drill bit through it into your hole and then bring come around here and drill your two and three eighths now and that'll get him lined up and get straight or crooked there get square all right now we'll get the uh the hole it's what two and an eighth right i'll get a big hole saw out now he's going to drill the two and an eighth inch hole and he's got to keep it 90 degrees offset and level 90 degrees. Let the thing rub up a little. All right, hold up. Make sure you're square to the building. Don't drill it crooked.
and then it almost it just stops and you come back the other way. And then his hole line up real nice to get his dead ball in. Are you square? Come around the other side now, and I'll hold it. Don't start it till you know you're 90 and that's square. Okay? Hold on. On these, you threw, turn this down all the way, back it off, line a couple holes up, then spin this in. Hi guys. And that way. This won't loosen up. This is hot. You don't want to touch that thing. Yeah, it's hot there, Ty. You can handle it, can't we? All right, run this through. Don't hang on to this part, though. Hang on to your drill. Let go of this part. Let go. You're going to untwist it again. And then... This is your square. Try to finish it on the front side so you won't get any chip out, you know. They line up nice. Pretty good. There's a little tiny lip there, so just clean that out a little. Wind part way in the ball. That way too. And then we know it's pretty good. And then he's got to do a one inch now. I want him to get back painting, but I wanted him to do this step instead of me doing it. Good for kids to learn things. And then make sure that goes in square also. Is that the hole we did, the one inch last time? Okay. And now make sure you're sh exactly straight so your striker goes in good. Let it spin fast with no pressure. Be 90. Yep. Straight with the door here. And Crank it again. So now what we got is remember we did a gap here and I think because it's a deadbolt he's probably still going to have to mortise this in on both sides because you definitely don't want him scrubbing and touching right? right. So if you want to go back to painting I could mark that for you, come out and chisel it, or you could use your little uh, oscillating tool. So I'll get the little plate out. Alright, so I just slid the striker in here, and then you want to hold it about in the center. Mark around the perimeter. And then use whatever tool you want to chisel it out you know this way it doesn't interfere and you don't get metal hitting metal and then I see he's got a nice sharp chisel I got him some Merwins they're pretty sharp still um, 
and we got to chew this out a little bit so I'll just get a hammer I saw one out here somewhere outside already and I'll give it a rat tap and clean this out yeah they're pretty sharp so that's good and this isn't inside so I'm not going to take a huge amount of pain to get this perfect with a router or anything you know and then I'm just going to Just keep going like this. I'll put this on time lapse. Finish cleaning this out. Alright, I'm going to have Dawson put this lock in because I think he'll like it. I'll help him by handing him some parts. And see if we can find our screw bits and get everything prepared here. So he's going to put the uh, entry striker in. And on this one, I think I mentioned it already, 2 and 3 eighths, 2 and 3 quarter, faces toward the lock. And then, hold on, you know, rambunctious here. Get it exact to Mundo, okay? Keep it exactly in the center of the hole. Stop. Start the other one so it don't turn on you. And don't over tighten them. Slow down. Put on number one. Or that's an automatic. Go slow with that sucker. And then. This is your outside handle, right? And then, let's see here. If I just take this off. Here's your inside handle. Where was that at? On here, but it, it prevents it from going in. Why does it prevent it? Let's see. Not a full two and an eighth inch. Bore. See what it does is it just stops it. No, it don't. Oh. All right, because it gives it strength. Then you need you need the collar, right? Yeah. So you got to take that little tool and press into that pin. So I'll give you the pin. I don't know why they assemble it if you got to take it apart. Press that and pull that assembly apart. Let's see it. So if you turn that, right? Does it come right off? There. See the little pin? Press down. And then this comes out. And then... You attach this and then... This went the on this on? way. So go put this on like that. And then I'll give you two screws for that one. Don't put them on fast, start them by hand. That's pretty being black like that, you know what? It's a nice finish. What's a finish called? Satin black? Matte black. Matte black. Start both of them. Let me turn the handle out here, make sure it's on. Straight and free. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let go. Run around. Run them in a little bit. No, don't bend it, but run them in to tighten. Okay. You gotta be careful on some of these tools. That's pretty strong. And then we gotta slide the collar on. 
and then the handle goes back on. Where do these notches go? Um, I give you the wrong one. That's not. Oh, yeah, this does go on there. Um, notches probably click onto there, so I would assume it, the square goes one way or the other. Yep. And then just give it a little snap, right? Beautiful. Now, he takes his handle, and it's pretty hard putting them on. <laughs> Pretty nice, huh? Now what we do is bring it into that door and see how it lines up on the striker there that's missing. And then go down and put two marks, top and bottom, so that we know where to put the striker plate. And let's see if I can find it here. There we go. Now how does it line up? Good. Now right now what he's got is he just put a little spacer block here so the door can't get past the other one. But I think he's going to run a continuous one all the way up. So this striker plate will go in. And what I like to do is take your tape measure, measure the door from the front to here. You got a heavy half. Five eighths. I don't know if it's five eighths. Five eighths way out there. Nine sixteenths. So take your tape measure and your pencil and hook on here and measure in that same number. Hook the tape on. You gotta drop it down. And then one up here. Sometimes these are bendable, adjustable, but not by much. Now, did that line up on that mark? Yeah. You should be able to move it in, right? And put it so you can see that mark. Otherwise, it'll be too tight. And then I'm going to give you two more screws to attach it. You can take these screws out and put big boys in later, but put these in for now. Is that all good? Um, I don't know, where's your vertical? You centered with the hole, right? Mm -hmm. Right straight in. I would look out here at your two marks to make sure that's right. And then I would look at those two marks. Pretty good right there. Get exactly in the center, it's gonna move it. No, get exactly in the center of the hole. They make a special drill bit designed for hinges, and I should get one of them. It pushes against the hole, and then you drill it in the center. Ah, do the other one. You're going over tight over-tighten them, because if you got to adjust it, what we can do is put a wood shim and glue in there, like a toothpick, and just move the hole over a little bit. Now, this isn't mortised in, so... I'm testing it right now. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not even in focus. It was a little off focus. So, he's got a striker plate. Don't set that in there. Don't set the tool in there. And then, we're on the surface right now. If that works, then we're gonna mark it and mortise that in. What do you think of that? But right now, yeah. if you look closely. There's no slop in it. How much gap is there? I would say it's probably too close, so I would probably mortise that. So I think what I'll do is I'll have him go back to painting while I mortise this one in. And we're the pencil We'll set girl. you guys up on time lapse. All right, so now he's going to put the deadbolt in. I did the striker. And then look at the words up on it and show him that, that it's two and three eighths and two and three quarter also. Two and three eighths, two and a quarter. All right, two and three now. quarter. That's what it is. Let's, let's mount that in there with oh. two of these guys. Two and three eighths. There you go. 
Huh? Two and three eighths and two and three quarters. Yep. And that should fit perfect. Because I did it, right? Better. You see, it's totally flush, so it's not going to stick out and scrub on the other door. Then we're going to take the hardware. Show them this thing. It's pretty cool. This is your digital put. All right, now he's gonna set his, his lock in there. It goes under. Is that facing up? Oh, I think he's got it upside down, so we gotta pull that out again. It was. Gonna put that underneath, and he's gonna put his, his deadbolt in, and see the, the key cuts on the top, that's the direction you want to put it in, because if you put it the other way, you can get water in the lock and freeze that. So put it this way. It should fit right in, right? You turned it. Doesn't it go straight? It is. Then go around here. And then you got to go around there. And you got to set... That hole must be where your wire comes out. I'll hold this. Yeah, you saw how much directions I read. No, out the bottom. I think it goes like that. Eh. I don't know. It's room for the wire because you're not pressing on the wire. I read. Yeah, we'll read the instructions. All right, so this goes on with these indents facing in toward you. Yeah. Start them by hand. And then run them in slowly. Can you make sure that that stays vertical? Yeah, we want this to look nice and straight out here. And then I'm happy out here. Start the other one. Don't ever go in wrong. Move your hand. Let's see it. Make sure your wire's not pink. And then... Are you that, good outside? Is that tight enough? Yeah. I like it. You don't love it? But not yet. Here, tighten them up a little bit. You don't want to get in here, monkey, again. There. Good. Now, what we got to put on now is the inside. Go over here. There's three bolts on your battery pack. You got to plug your wire in. What's that say? Read that quick. You won't be able to read it again. FCC rules. Uh-oh, we got to follow the rules. We don't want to follow FCC rules, do we? You're plugging your digital in. i got to go find some batteries. Should be blue to blue. Now turn your lock here. No, pull that out. Or pull it out. Turn your lock upward. You want this like straight up if it's unlocked, right? And then straight across when it is locked. Oh, it's at a certain angle. Yeah. You don't want to drop screws outside here. Don't want screws. And then really slow with that one. Get them started.
Hold on. Hold on. I don't think it goes there. It goes down there. Oh. I think up here goes a wood screw. So it holds it into the door. And then there's two. And then I'll get him some batteries. So I'll be right back with some batteries. We'll test this bad boy. There is That's one more wood screw that goes up here. Screw. And then I'm going to run grit the batteries. So he's got four Energizer Maxes in there I give him. Now we got to go and set the code. And he's going to set his own code. I don't know what you do. Probably a generic. Sort of like my building. Yeah, sort of a generic one to lock and unlock. But we got to learn it so we can get in it. All right. I think he's got the code in there. But we don't have the striker on yet, the striker plate. So I bring the the uh, bolt out, and then I do a couple marks on it. I prop the door open here, and then same thing is I like to measure. Oh, he took the tape. Where is it? I like to measure where the deadbolt ends, which is one half inch back so I like to go here a half inch back do a line now I take the striker plate line her up on that and the striker plate usually is large enough that you have a full eighth of an inch afterwards so I just take line that up in the center and if anything a door normally sags over a period of time so I usually move it to the lower if I raise it to the upper and the hinge ever got a little loose it's going to be tight on it so I like to lower it down and then there's my line in here. So I want to move it out, give me that eighth of an inch. So I think we're good right about there. And then I'm going to mortise this in also. And he's going to have to paint this anyway. So I'll be uh, setting this on time lapse to mortise this one in. You get really bored with this quick. All right, the striker is mortised and in place. Let's lock it and unlock it. I, I set my code. And you just click the little lock button and it's locked and then you type in your code there you go it's pretty cool and I think that this is better it's pretty obviously and then it's got the digital display and then it's also got the deadbolt which is stronger than just the regular door lock so there we go so now what I have to do is obviously I have to put something over top of my doors like a board across and then what I want to do is have um, uh, this is going to be my stationary door and this is going to be my door that open and closes I want to have something to put over the gap here for weather and to shut against so I'll figure that out but I'm going to keep on caulking and painting and uh, see you guys in the next clip all right, there's a, a woodpecker up there. Do you see it? I hear him. All right, what do I got here? Is I took a board and I cut a 10 degree angle on both sides of this. It had damage. It was a wide board, but it had oh, all split. You see him? Yeah, right, there. right here. He just flew up to this tree. No, he's right here. You can, still see him? Look at his head. I'm just banging. Right there, oh right yeah, there. he's right here in the cherry tree. Look at this tree, he's straight up. All right, let's see if we can see him. Is it a pilated? Okay. It's right here in this cherry tree. Okay. I'm trying to see him. Somewhere here. 
not coming in on the film, but I do see him. All right, so what we got is I took this board, had a little damage on it, and I cut two 10 degrees. I pre-drilled two holes for him, and he's gonna set that up there by himself, right? I'm gonna give you a screw. Put that right in there. Oh, you got a screw. And then if you could hold that, I'm gonna take this prop board and hold up this end. Oh, this is an old board, this is a heavy one. Put it up there, see if it works. Put it up there and get it up as high as you can, about an inch below that window. Does it fit? Left and right. You like that? I am flush with that trim here. Are you good? You got a screw? Huh? Can you push it? Here. This is kind of difficult with one person, but just start your screw good in there. Don't tighten it all the way down. Get it down to touch and stop. He's going to... Don't tighten it. Move your ladder now. And then he's going into a, a, a real thick cherry board. And so it's going to go hard. But that's going to give him a rain cap. He can caulk it, whatever. And that's going to keep a lot of weather off the door. Oh, you got it. Uh, you happy with that? And then he's gonna drill, pre-drill, and then go down the row there and get some more screws in it. And then he's gonna paint that white. And that all look pretty decent. And that'll give him a, drain, a rain cap. He's got to pull the center up straight. That look good. So what do you think of that? That'll keep a lot of the weather off the top of your door. Mm -hmm. And um, it's far enough down from the window, won't hurt anything. You might have an icicle hanging off that, right? Yeah. So now he's just got to finish up his trim and caulk and things and put his screens on and miscellaneous. He's got one row of screws on the metal to do, right? And gaskets? Yeah. He's got some uh, M seal expanding foam gasket to do so the bottom a eaves. Bit of tinkering to do, but. And then he's got to do a little mini ramp there. It's probably just a pressure treated uh, 2 by 8, 10, or 12 on an angle. It's good enough to run his vehicles up in there. Be kind of cool. All right, so I put a second coat on the doors. Looking good from a distance. Doors are good up for up close. Uh, he's gonna just roll the front with a roller pad, and he's out here in the back. You hiding out back here? Huh? Hiding out back, and he's rolling that on there, nice. It's looking good. Say hi, guys. Looking good. What do you got left there, Dawson? It's looking good. And then I got a little overspray on the window. What'd you write on there? Please subscribe. That's cool. Um, and I got to scrape that off with a razor blade. But um, looking pretty good. You got anything on the back to do? No. Yeah, a little blue touch up. That's it. A little bit of blue. So let's see what this looks like. Look at all the leaves already. Oh, yeah. Got to touch up a little bit there and up there. He's got to put the screens on. Looking good. Another beautiful fall day. Almost all the leaves have fallen on some of these trees. The cherry, they're just about empty. This maple, look at that Dawson, there's like six leaves left on it. Look at them, they're all on the ground here. I keep mowing every day. Well anyways, I better help out here. I put that overspray on there where Dawson subscribe on his YouTube channel there. 
Um, I'm going to scrape off my overspray to give them a hand. I think I got to do front and back. Okay, we got the screens on. I got the panes all cleaned up. He's painting on the interior edge. The rest of the trim on the front will be finished with this project. That'll be cool, right? It looks really good, don't it, guys? It's all set here. I right, just going to finish out the shed build. We got the screens on, windows clean. He's got the trim. He's got to do one more board down here and he's going to finish this up. We got to end this video. We got a birthday party to attend. We got uh, all the uh, bats on, the battens. He's got the trim all painted. All right, here it is. What do you guys think? Look, pan over to my other building here. And you can tell that they go together. They both look pretty darn good. So stay tuned for upcoming videos. I'm going to be using this, and I'll be doing different projects in here. So stay tuned for that, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Hope you enjoyed this series.